Hey guys, welcome to the second video of a four part series that follows this video and seeks to delve a little bit deeper and give you guys some subject specific A level advice. Today we're going to be tackling A level maths and A level further maths combined. For reference, I took the Edexcel exam board maths and further maths exams in the summer of 2023 and I achieved an A star in both of them. I also am currently at university studying maths, so. Firstly, certified maths nerd. Secondly, if you guys have any questions about that specifically, feel free to drop me an email. Other than that, I've got 10 tips lined up for you guys, so let's get going. My first and most important tip is that the only real way that you're going to get better at maths is by practicing. And even though there's plenty of research to support this, if you want some A-level based evidence, you can pull up the spec for A-level maths and further maths, and then the spec for any other subject. And what you'll notice is that there's much less content to learn for A-level maths and further maths. And because all A-levels are supposed to be about the same difficulty, this tells you that when you get into your maths or further maths exam, you're not going to be expected to simply just sit there and regurgitate the things that you've been taught. The reason why I think further maths particularly is so hard is because in those exams, you're required to expertly manipulate the knowledge that you've gained. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is by practicing that skill. And so even though at times it might seem trivial, I would definitely recommend that you're working through all of the workbook questions that you possibly can. And in your spare revision time, you're rinsing through all of the exam board's past paper questions. I also think it's worth noting that, especially from my experience with the Edexcel notebooks, maths is full of tricks and shortcuts and links. And the way that they like to teach you those was not in the actual lessons, but by giving you weird questions in the exercises. And so I wouldn't be frequently skipping questions that seem obvious because while there are sometimes questions that seem easy because they are easy, there are also sometimes questions that seem easy but aren't and they're deliberately misleading and those questions might come up in the exam and you don't want to get into that exam situation and not be able to do it simply because you were too lazy to answer the workbook questions. My second tip is that when you're learning something new in maths, you should always focus on understanding the thing before you even think about memorising it. I think it's much easier to grasp mathematical concepts if you're given something that you don't understand, you start with your base knowledge and then through practice or through asking questions, you gradually develop on that until you understand the thing in its entirety and you know where and how to apply it. If instead you're given something tricky that you don't fully understand and you immediately focus on memorising it, when it comes around to exam season, you're not going to be able to properly answer questions because you don't fully understand. And so there's absolutely no point in memorising things in maths. You need to be able to understand the concepts, where they come from and how they apply. My third tip is that if you're stuck, think geometrically. As your maths becomes more advanced, it will often become much more abstract. And while that can be really exciting, it also means that it can be harder to wrap your head around the logical steps in a proof or argument. And so a way that I like to overcome this is simply by, on the internet or on YouTube, searching geometric proof of or geometric interpretation of, and then whatever I was struggling with. Now, a quick Google search 10 minutes ago told me that the majority of the population are visual learners. And so if you're struggling with some logical conclusions in a proof, looking up a picture or a model or an animation of something might be the thing you need to overcome that hurdle. And then hopefully the rest of the proof will unfold. My fourth tip is to think about your exam timings. I often find people struggling with the fact that there isn't enough time in maths and further maths exams to complete all of the questions thoroughly. And it might be that you need that little bit of extra time to do some thinking, or perhaps your content knowledge isn't quite there, in which case you may require a bit of memorization. But I also think it's worth considering whether you're really optimizing your performance in the exam. There are lots of little things you can do that if you practice them beforehand are going to save you little chunks of time throughout and that's going to give you a couple of minutes at the end that you can use to check or to grab a couple of extra marks and in that situation that is exactly what you need. It may be worth a couple of months before the exam going through a paper and thinking about what things are taking you longer than they should. And some examples of this might be that you take a long time to find things in the formula book, you take a long time to go through the menu in your calculator, recalling set trig values, drawing diagrams, all of these things you can practice and get quicker at and then you can save yourself little bits of time. My fifth tip is obvious but I'm being so serious when I look at you right now and tell you that you absolutely must check for silly mistakes. And it's often the higher grade students that fall into this trap because you need to get over your ego. You should not once when checking through your exam be looking at a section and not rigorously going through it because it's easy or obviously you've got that right. 
and I've definitely fallen victim of this because I'm pretty sure in my AS further maths exam I wrote three times two is five. And the reason I did that is because I was overly confident and I assumed that in that stressful situation of an exam, I'd got my three times tables right when I obviously hadn't. And so especially if you're someone going for those top grades, you absolutely must be going through every single line of your proof without fail. My sick tip is to go online and follow through videos of YouTubers running through past paper solutions. If instead of looking at a mark scheme, you're looking at a video of someone running through a past paper, not only are you learning how to answer the question, but you also get someone there giving their verbal reasoning as to how they got from each step of the solution to the next. And so as well as getting smarter and learning more of the content, you're developing the skill of how to give a clear and concise argument. And that is a crucial one for when it rolls around to exam time. This also links to a tip of my original A-level video on how you're much more likely to remember a video because you're having someone teach you rather than just looking at words on a page. My seventh tip is for all the procrastinators out there and it's that it's not possible to cram for your A-level maths or A-level further maths exam. And so if you know you're that kind of person, you need to try and get out of that habit as quickly as possible. Like I said earlier in the video, maths is a skill and so you need time to cultivate that. It's not going to be sufficient if you just memorize the formulas and the identities the day before the exam and then rock up. And even though I'm not a professional on procrastination or cramming, I would recommend that you start just by doing three or five easy-ish math questions a day just to get yourself into the habit and then slowly build that up into more difficult ones. Because a little bit of practice is better than none and this especially applies for maths and further maths A level. My eighth tip I also mentioned in my A-level physics video, and that is that you should never ever trust the formula booklet. Now in your maths and further maths exams, you'll be given a pretty hefty booklet of formulas, and so it'd be a valid logical assumption that everything you need is in there, but this is definitely not true, especially in further maths, there are so many formulas that you're going to need that are not referenced anywhere in the formula booklet. And so you need to be really careful and make sure that before the exam, you're running through the formula booklet and you're running through your textbook and you're making sure that you note down and memorize any of the formulas that you need that are not in the booklet that you are given. Because it'd be a real shame to lose marks because of a formula that you didn't remember. It's also worth going through the formula booklet and just checking that you understand all of the formulas in there and you understand what each of the letters in there represents. Again, because it's something that you can run through quickly and it's a shame to miss out marks because you didn't understand something like that. My ninth tip is for the people that have fallen behind a little bit or perhaps you're doing a little bit of last minute revision. I know for a fact that in the Edexcel and the AQA textbooks, and so I assume in the other textbooks as well, there are pages at the end of each chapter that are a checklist or mind map that go through everything that you need to remember from the chapter. And even though you should take everything with a pinch of salt because there's a reason why the chapter is that long and not just a couple of pages, it can be a good thing to go through and make flashcards based off those summary pages and then you can run through those if you've fallen behind or perhaps in some of your filler time throughout the year. For example, while you're having your breakfast or maybe while you're walking to school, just run through them and make sure that you're keeping on top of everything that you need to know. My 10th tip is a bit of a cheat, but I often have people asking me if I think that the big calculator is worth it. And by big calculator, I assume people mean the Casio FX CG50, which is the one that I used. The other popular alternative is the Casio Class Wiz, which is great. My sister uses it. It does everything it needs to do. Um, do I think the big calculator is worth the investment? Absolutely, I do. I've been talking about optimizing your productivity. And I think the big calculator, the interface is so much easier to use. And so you're going to be able to do things so much quicker. It's also just able to do more. And so if you've got the money, I would absolutely invest into it. But I don't think that if you're taking exams without the FXCG50, you should be worried about your performance. You can definitely work the class with really quickly and get it going so that you're almost at the same productivity levels. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and for the support. As always, if you have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram in the description or you can email me. There should be a link on my channel page. Otherwise, very best of luck for your A-level maths and maybe A-level further maths journeys and I will see you guys soon.